Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and I'm very excited because I have a very special guest today, and her name is Angela Flicken, and she is here to talk about stress and anxiety and a little bit about OCD and how they all correspond with one another, and she has some great advice and some great tips on how to cope with uh, how to cope with uh, uh, anxiety and stress on a daily basis, and she's going to share all that with us. So, Angela, why don't you tell us a little about yourself, what you do, and, you know, I'd, I'm very excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Stacey, for having me. I'd be happy to kind of uh, tell you and your listeners a bit more about me uh, and how I roll. So, I'm a, I'm a psychotherapist. Uh, I'm an online educator and got into this field just being in therapy myself as a little kid, uh, parents were divorced and dad was getting remarried. And I was a very anxious, uh, high emotional kid. And my therapist at the time was just lovely and held me and all my feelings. And what a place to be to just put it all in a safe space. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my mom worked a lot, uh, and we weren't wealthy by any means, but just kind of seeing this, this woman and dress nicely in this nice house. And she was so warm. I was like, I want to be her. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's even at, at 10, I think being interested in how people think and feel and having that experience myself, I think I was hooked so I never really deviated from wanting to be a 10, you know, as a 10 year old, never wanting to anything else other than being a therapist. So that I was sold. And through my kind of college and graduate career, I really stuck with psychotherapy and uh, found my calling in anxiety and stress disorders. Yeah. I know what it's like to be anxious. Certainly most of us know what it's like to be stressed and how to make behavioral changes, right. knowing that we can't change the things that are on our plate all the time. Right. But if we change how we manage them, what you once used to make us anxious or stressed no longer does. And to be able to affect positive changes in people's lives fairly quickly, right. um, I just fell in love with. So that's kind of how I got my, my start. Um, I've worked at McLean hospital as a senior social worker and McLean hospital is one of the top psychiatric hospitals in the country. I've been a therapist, uh, at Harvard university for undergrad and graduate students, and then kind of catapulted myself into private practice. And then from there started writing and, uh, you know, doing all sorts of things to think, how do I get as many people as I can to kind of share these skills that are so effective. They're research-based. I'm not making anything up on my right. own, but it's yeah. just really teaching people strategies on how, how do you manage two strong emotions, anxiety and stress, you cannot yeah. get rid of. They're there for a reason, but when you learn how to manage them, it's uh, just a game changer in terms of like how you, how you kind of move through your life with more ease. So that's a, a wee bit about me. <laughs> I find, you know, it, it like there's really two things that make a major um, impact on people's lives. And I find that it's either, you know, the environment you grew up in, you know, whether it be dysfunctional or, you know, whatever the cause may be, something tragic happens within that time frame, you know, can play a role and change that person's behavior the rest of their lives or just having one traumatic event change your entire life, you know, just, just put in such an emotional impact and not knowing how to cope with those emotions and then hold them inside, you know, can change a person's behavior and change the way they feel about themselves and the life they lead. So it's so important. I feel when people feel any type of stress or anxiety in their lives to actually find out ways on how to cope with those emotions and how to overcome them because I feel like if you don't go for help then it just escalates yes yeah it can snowball pretty quickly or you think you've got it and you're fine you don't want to yeah. burden anybody you know it's not that big of a deal uh other people look like they're handling it uh and it just adds up and adds up and adds up um, and little do you know, people aren't handling it and people look just like you look, you probably look like you have it together too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, looks can be deceiving, but yes, you know, that this, if you, if you start to feel something and, and you're not feeling good, 
um, being able to pause and think about what might help you uh, course correct or kind of feel more centered before it really gets away from you is uh, the way to go. I feel sometimes either people uh, can be in denial or because they don't want to face the issue or sometimes they just don't see it as an abnormal behavior. They don't realize that, you know, what they're going through is anxiety or stress related and they, they don't go for help because they don't realize that there is a problem. How do you approach that when you, you know, if a person doesn't realize there is a problem but their outsiders can see it, do you interact and say something to that person? Sometimes when people say something, you know, people don't take it very well. Usually people want help when they ask for it. And if you don't hear them ask for it, a lot of times people don't. But on the other hand, you know, a lot of times when people are even suicidal, they're going, because anxiety could lead to stress mm -hmm. and then stress, you know, and those two could lead to depression and then depression could lead to suicide. So, mm -hmm. you know, and most people who commit suicide, they don't show any signs of all those emotions, you know? So if a person that you see is going through anxiety, you know, do you interact and say something to that person? Well, I think usually people are coming to me, then they're definitely aware that they've got stuff to work on. Sometimes I'll notice something like, oh, do you notice that, you know, you're um, actually experiencing or kind of how you're talking to me and sharing is more depressed than anxious. And here's why I'm thinking that or right. Um, somebody might say like, I don't know why I, I'm having a hard time making friends and I'm not sure why. And so they're kind of aware that something's happening, but they don't really know what the problem is. And through our work together, it's like, oh, I can kind of see what might be happening. Right. Yeah. Um, but if someone's coming to me, they're, they're usually very aware that some, something's not right. Um, if somebody is sharing something and, you know, they're, they have a colleague or a friend that they're worried about, usually it starts with like, Hey, I'm concerned. This is what I'm noticing. Do you notice this too? Right. Uh, rather, so that can help people feel less defensive yeah. um, and giving feedback rather than criticism. Uh, usually the, the sandwich effect of like, Hey, I really love you. And I'm, you're my, one of my favorite people. And if I was stuck, I would want you to share your concerns with me. I'm feeling concerned. This is my thought. What do you think? Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's that. And that sometimes people, you know, we might think something's a problem and somebody else doesn't feel that way. Right. right. Um, so it, it can get tricky that way, but you're right. When, when you have, you know, anxiety and depression are best friends, when you have one long enough, usually the other one's going to show up for the ride and suicidal thoughts and uh, ideation, uh, which is ideas of suicide are symptoms of depression. Yeah. Um, so if, if that's on the map for you, um, then I would immediately, you know, get help because you're, you're not alone in having those thoughts. Right. Exactly. Um, and many, many people have them. It doesn't mean you're, you know, someone's going to act on them, but it's important to, to share, even if they're right. really scary um, because you'd be surprised that you're not alone. And exactly. again, my own experience as a 10 year old being held by my therapist is that yeah. having somebody to hold those thoughts with you can feel like you, you know, a game changer for you and that you're not alone Yeah, and that you can kind of see a path forward. So highly recommend and a fan of therapy. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. I, you know, I, I find today in, in today's society, especially, I think you think life has gotten more stressful for our, you know, for, for everybody, even, you know, our generation, the, the new generation coming up, you know, things are very hectic. I think things are more expected of people. Um, you know, so much has gone on in the last couple of years, you know, and I think, I think that there's, you know, whether it be a relationship, you know, causing the stress, the environment you live in or, um, you know, just finances, whatever the case may be, there's so much going on. COVID ca caused a lot of stress and depression for people. And, you know, sometimes even when COVID ended, people were still going through those, those emotions because they weren't settled. And, you know, what, what are your suggestions for people who are going through anxiety or stress? You know, what's the best ways you find for people to cope with those emotions? There's the good news is there's many different strategies out there and we all get to have our own uh, individualized toolbox. So part of the reason why I like 
what I do is that I get to be creative. So what works for me might not work for somebody else, but we get to come up with different strategies. So I kind of give people a lot to work on. They go out and they try stuff on, so to speak, right. and they come back and they tell me what worked and what didn't and whatever worked, we kind of add to and whatever d- doesn't, we tweak and try to make better. So a lot of the skills I have learned have been tweaked by people I've worked with. Yeah. Um, but What I typically try to have people think about, you know, if you're feeling anxious and stressed, think about what on your plate is causing you to feel that way. Sometimes it's obvious. Other times people have to pause. Like, I don't know why I'm feeling this way. I'm just feeling this way. Exactly. And then depending on what is causing you to feel anxious, is it thoughts like everybody has it better than I do. My coworkers are getting their work done faster than I am. I'm too slow. I'm not good enough. Like, is it cognitive negative distortion? Right. Are you feeling physical discomfort? So emotions right. can bring physical changes to our body. So when we get anxious, sometimes we hold our breath, our heart races, our stomach drops, you know, all these different, we feel nauseous, like all these different experiences where our body is telling us, we're experiencing uh, an uncomfortable emotion. Right. And so based on those two things, um, I'll either have people do a shortcut. Like if you're having negative thoughts and you would really like them to stop Mm -hmm. and you're no, you you know, at some level they're distorted, which means they're not true. I try to just tell people, what would you tell your best friend if they were in the same situation? Would you say, yes, you're too slow and you're going to get fired and everybody's better than you. You probably wouldn't tell a stranger on the street that. So what would you say to your best friend and then try to buy that, buy into that for yourself? So it's like, everybody's going at their own pace. I actually got three emails this week from clients or coworkers or boss saying, Hey, I'm doing a good job. So there's evidence that I'm not that bad. So you start to kind of collect some evidence as to why maybe your negative thoughts aren't true. And that usually I tell people, think about what you would tell your best friend and then whatever right. you would tell them say to yourself. So it's like a cognitive therapy shortcut. Yeah. And then some tangible strategies to regulate if you're feeling physically uncomfortable, specifically with anxiety is temperature change. Right. So if you're feeling anxious, think about going cold run Mm -hmm. cold water on your wrists, take off your shoes. If you work from home and work on your bathroom tiles, uh, uh, wash your face with cold water. What I have recently discovered that's really soothing. If uh, there's ice face rollers that are really popular. Yes. I've seen those. People are using them for like, I don't know, like deep puffy face, your yes, face yes, or yes. like wrinkles, but I love it for just grounding when I'm feeling anxious or stressed. And it's yeah. so soothing. It's not super, you know, cold, but it's just enough where when you do that, you're kind of, you go cold, it calms down your body. Yeah. Your breathing starts to calm down. You start to feel more grounded back in the moment and right. it gives your brain a break from whatever the anxious stress is. Right. So that by the time you put down the cold, you've had the cognitive reset that said, okay, now what I want to do about this, right? right? What is my path forward rather than running around and panicking? So if you're stressed or anxious and you aren't sure what to do, get something cold, a few minutes, put the ice back in the freezer or the, the cold water, turn it off. Uh, and notice how you feel. And that just gives you enough so that you can start to think a bit more clearly. So those are two of my kind of go-to strategies that, you know, your listeners can try today and and see if, if they find that helpful, but those uh, can work really well. I like that a lot. Now you said that you focus also on OCD. How does a person know if they have an obsessive compulsive disorder? So you would, to to know for sure, you want to see somebody that specializes in OCD. That could be a psychiatrist. So a doctor who prescribes psychiatric medicine. It could be someone like me, a social worker who specializes in it, a a psychologist, sometimes pediatricians or primary care doctors know enough where they can say, okay, I think you're hitting criteria for obsessive compulsive disorder. 
Mm -hmm. uh, basically OCD is you think about anxiety on a continuum, just think of a line, right? We're all on this line, right? right. Most of us, I don't know, 8 billion people, but most of us have anxiety <laughs> in our life. We actually want to be anxious. It saves our life, right? It's an emo all emotions are there for a reason. So yeah. it, it's just becomes an issue when that emotion runs amok, right? And yeah. OCD is the higher octane anxiety. Okay. So it is a constant fear of something and no one likes to be afraid again yeah. most, and when we have a fear our brain and body will say i don't want to be here so i'm going to go do some things to try to calm down mm -hmm. and we calm down and then it doesn't do anything it doesn't take away the fear right so we just get stuck in this loop of what we call ritualizing or compulsions to try to manage a fear that mm -hmm. isn't necessarily something to be afraid of right, right. Okay. so what helps treat ocd are behavioral therapies so these are strategies to help you think and feel differently right so mm -hmm. you're seeing a fear that is something that you don't necessarily need to be afraid of seeing someone like me where i can say here are some strategies to help you kind of think through and fear, feel less afraid of this and think about this more clearly. So that's cognitive behavioral therapy. So right. changing the way you think about the same situation. Right. And then there's exposure and response prevention, ERP, which is facing the fear. Yes. But in a way that's well thought out and, you know, you're working with a coach, none of this is just, again, throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks. It's all very well thought out. It's all research-based. Um, but for OCD, that is a higher octane anxiety disorder. Um, okay. And the good news is across the continuum, wherever you are on this line of anxiety, there are things out there that can really help you feel better. Is there anything naturally someone can do to help themselves instead of resorting to medication at first? Um, yeah, everyone's different. So, and every brain is different. Uh, right, so exactly. uh, it really depends on what someone wants to do, how severe their anxiety is. Um, okay. So sometimes um, medication can be really helpful. It's almost like mm -hmm. I always think about pressure in a tire, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you're really anxious and you come to me and I can tell you skills upside down, left and right. Yeah. And you're, st it's still not touching Resonating. you because you're so high. Right. Yeah. And I, I know what it's like to be so high. I know skills, but when I'm that high, it's really hard to get down, come there. down. Yeah. So sometimes if you're living at that state of just constant high for weeks to months, yeah. sometimes medication can be really helpful. What's the air out of the tires right. so that all the skills I can teach you actually start to stick. Yeah. And then you taper off the meds and you've got your skills, right? You can't unlearn right. what you already know. So once you have the skills, you always have them. Yes. So sometimes I find that helpful, but if people want to give skills a try first, you know, that's great. Uh, it's really yeah. everybody's, you know, different, um, desire and wishes. Um, so there are, there are many different directions you can take, but uh, skills can definitely be helpful and a good place to start if you're not necessarily wanting to jump right into medication, which is absolutely fine. Right. Exactly. That's a great answer. I, you know, I, I, everybody's brain is differently. Everybody thinks differently and you really, you know, you know, every individual needs their own personalized care because nobody is, is the same you know? Yes. Yeah. And I think that's why it makes it so complicated compared to like our cholesterol levels, right? Yeah. So like if you and I would, were both on Lipitor, it would do the same thing, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. And the same result, but we have two very different brain chemistries. So Prozac, which is a standard antidepressant might help mm -hmm. me, but give you side effects or not do anything for you. So it's this very uh, interesting um, thing where we literally all brains are different and preferences are different. Um, yeah. and, uh, so it's just, it really is trying to kind of think through what you, what, you know, you feel is wherever you're at and what would be most helpful for you. But the good news is there's so many different options, yeah. um, that, uh, you know, you're not, um, stuck. 
Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, um, do you suggest meditation or yoga to be a helpful um, way of, of helping stress or anxiety? Yeah. You know, I think mindfulness and meditation are uh, wonderful practices for managing any challenging emotions that we have, right? Research will definitely back that up. Mm -hmm. And there's different ways to do mindfulness and meditation. Some people will do um, yoga practice as a way of grounding and staying in the moment and focusing on their breath. Uh, other people will do other types of exercise. I used to be a runner and I would run. I couldn't think about anything other than my breath, how my, my side was, how my running was my legs, where was I feeling? I was in the moment in the moment. Yeah. And that's really what, um, mindfulness practice is about is the art of being in the present moment. And the more you do that research shows anxiety, stress, depression, anger, irritability, all of that really starts to melt away. Yeah. And the good news with mindfulness is that you don't have to do it for hours a day or 20 minutes a day. You can do, I'm a big fan of sound bites because we're Mm -hmm. all busy, Yes, but sound bites add up over time. Right. They do. If you if you have 20 minutes every day or an hour, like how, however much time you want to donate, go for it. But the soundbite approach is um, in between sessions for me. I sit all day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and with COVID, I now work from home and I don't walk to work anymore. Right. So moving my body has happened much less. So I have to get very creative with moving my body. It's yeah. very hard because time flies mm-hmm. and the days go by. It does. But for mindfulness, I'll stay, I'll walk around my house and I'll just start to notice things Yeah, and I'll notice pictures or uh, trips, you know, some trinket that my husband and I got, or yeah. I'll look out the window and notice like what neighbor is walking, you know, with their dog or what sounds do I hear or the sound of a blue jay. And all of that is mindfulness, right? I'm in the moment and then Mm -hmm. I sit back down. So you can get it in 30 seconds, five minutes, however much you want. But if you intentionally do that, you are taking care of yourself. You are actually filling up your well-being tank. So the stress and anxiety that's coming in your life isn't going to kind of tsunami you because you have this armor of kind of self-care and uh, skills that you're kind of periodically doing throughout your day. And that's what I'm such a fan of is that it doesn't have to be moving mountains to take care of yourself. You don't have to spend hours at the gym. Again, you can't, but most of us don't have that time Yeah, that you can really do these um, short strategies that really do give you a lot of bang for your buck. I like that idea a lot because, it, you know, especially in our society today, we were mentioning it very briefly earlier that people are always, it's a rush, rush society, you know, especially if you live in certain parts of the United States, like, you know, New York, New Jersey, California, everybody's a go, 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 you know? So it's, you know, sometimes you don't, you know, it's, it's not the healthiest thing, but sometimes people are just so busy doing whatever they're doing that they don't make enough of time or give themselves a little self-love. So those sign about sign bites are are wonderful because you could just take a few moments for yourself, like you said, to walk around the house, maybe notice a few things, you know, it kind of relaxes your body. It brings you down to a moment where you're more observant and you're using different parts of your brain and you're relaxing at the same time. And it could be very beneficial. Yes. And the, the and that there's, uh, research to back it all up, right? Like it actually does work. Yeah. Um, and it, you don't have to, um, work that hard to see results. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Now you said that you are in the process of launching a book soon. So that's very exciting. Can you tell us a little about that? Yes. I'm going to throw a huge party when this book is out. I'm telling you, it is. Um, I'm taking myself out to dinner. Like I'm just, uh, it is a process. Writing a book is no is. joke, especially I've never written a book before. And it's a man, lot of work. it's a lot of work. Um, it's two years in the making. It's hopefully it's, it's uh, on its finishing ends. It's called chaotic to clear headed eight ways to manage your stress. And I really wanted to share with people 
uh, all the skills and strategies I teach in my practice, but also just how do you master your stress knowing that you can't ever get rid of it. Right. Uh, it's, you know, it's going to show up, but you can really start to become um, an expert in how you take care of yourself. And exactly. again, because I like sound bites, it doesn't have to be, you know, moving massive boulders and mountains to kind of get there. Yeah. So the book is coming out. I'm very excited for that. Uh, and that, that definitely has been an undertaking uh, and I'm very proud of it. I'm very excited for you. You know, it's, it's, it is a lot of work and it does take a lot of time. And I feel like every time you read through a, the manuscript, you find more and more things that need to be done, you know? So I'm so glad that you're getting to the point you know, where you'll, you'll be launching it soon. Do you have like an expected month that you, it might be coming out or right now or you're just in the end processes and it'll probably be out in in, in the next few months or so? Yeah, we're looking probably at September, October. Oh, excellent. Um, as the, you know, the release date. Um, so we'll, I'll definitely keep you posted, but that's been yeah. um, definitely one of my uh, most challenging and rewarding uh projects I've taken on. Um, and then we also have, uh, I wanted to, um, create something for people who like to keep a schedule and also, uh, need help with staying on top of self-care and skills and just yes. kind of all the process that it takes to just stay on top of things outside of work. Right. Um, so I worked on creating a journal planner together that will be hopefully on Amazon pretty soon within oh, the next excellent. month or so. And it's for people that really like to have structure, appreciate a calendar, and at the same time, really want to be mindful of how they take care of themselves each day Yeah, and not forget that. So included in this will be a list of strategies and skills. Uh, so That's you can awesome. just flip back and kind of plug in what you want to, to try each day, knowing that, you know, you have access to those skills right there. Um, so that's also something that I'm really excited about. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm very excited. I can't wait. You'll probably have that on your website, I assume. So yes, that will be on my website soon. Yes. Okay. Now tell everybody your website, just so they know. Um, sure. So uh, my uh, practice website is progresswellness.com. Uh, and then I also have another website where I'm uh, starting to build, uh, where I have my blog and newsletter is worried to well balanced. So you oh, can I find like me that. on, on either one, um, but a lot about me and my practice and who I am is progresswellness.com. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Now, is there any other tips or anything, any other advice you'd like to give our audience before you go? Anything that you feel that might be beneficial um, for people who are going through stress and, you know, they've gotten all these, these great tips because you just provided a whole bundle, but is there any other thing you like to say before you go? I think one of my kind of go-to strategies is trying to think about a conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. uh, and every day, if you're stressed out, you're anxious, you've got a lot on your plate, think about a conveyor belt. So there you are at the grocery store, right? You right. have laid out all of the things on your conveyor belt. Every day you get to order and prioritize what's on this conveyor belt. Yes. And that each day you can pick up whatever you want for however long you want. So right. for me, on my plate or my conveyor belt is writing my book. It's my private practice. It's being a mom. It's being a wife. It's being yeah. a friend, a daughter, and an individual woman. Right? Yes. So with a lot on like, your conveyor all, belt. <laughs> all this stuff, right? So it's, I order that based on my priority. And each day, something, everything gets touched, but I determine how long I pick it up. So sometimes like my that. book, gets an hour. Sometimes it gets five minutes. Sometimes it's on the back of the line and I don't touch it that day. But right. when there's a lot going on, you having control over how you prioritize and knowing that you, if you just touch something every day or for five minutes a day or three times a week, that time adds up. And that over time, yes. for me, ta-da, I've got a book. So right. It doesn't have to be overnight, but I like the idea of trying to visualize a conveyor belt and you determine the order and you determine how often and for how long you pick up each item. And just like the sound bites of strategies, yes, 
sound bites of time add up and over time you have produced work, self-care, priorities, and you'd be surprised that your work doesn't suffer, nothing falls to the wayside, and you're actually happier and less stressed because, again, you're not procrastinating, right? uh, and you're really focused on one thing at a time. So that's another strategy that I like, uh, and sometimes people kind of find that visual helpful. Also, you know, um, do you have any suggestions before we go about when it comes to prioritizing and time management, is there anything that you tell your your patients about writing things down or maybe some type of organizational or some type of outline or something, pictures, circles that might help them, you know, because each day is a new day, like you just mentioned, and sometimes we can give more to one thing, but, you know, how do we, you know, prioritize and know in our head what's the most important thing? What do I need to focus on? And, you know, actually trying to create something very simple so we could try to follow it the best we can, you know, so we don't get distracted and diluted because it's so easy to get distracted. You know, one minute you're doing something you're supposed to, and then the next minute, you know, something distracts you and you're on a different pathway. And before you know it, you look at the clock and it's four o'clock. I'm like, oh my God, I did nothing today, you know? (laughs) Yeah, it it, even that happens to me. I like, oh, this is... I see something shiny and I'm over here and I'm like, wait, I was, I was just doing this task. Like, how did I end up over here? So there's, there's so many different ways to do it. I think this is why I like the work I do because you get to be creative and everybody's different. So a lot of it is just trying to, it's trial and error and starting with one thing, one strategy and seeing if it works and if it doesn't thinking about why it doesn't and trying to tweak it. But you could start with write down everything on your to-do list pick the top three for the day and Great idea. cross it out or start with two and then go to the list and start two more. Right. Or right. you could mix it in with like, Hey, laundry doesn't take too long. Just throw it in and get it started. Right. Then I'm going to go. And while that's do, doing that, then I'll focus on for me. It's just like, okay, well I'll do my book. And as soon as laundry's over, I'm done with that. I'm going to go for a walk. Right? right. So those three things uh, and just focusing on that. Some, that's why I like a calendar and the, the structure of it yes. and that nothing, I mean, many things aren't set in stone. So if you have your to-do list and you realize oh, I didn't do anything on it, it's just like, that's right. okay. Tomorrow's another day. Exactly. There's, you know, it falls Don't beat into yourself over day. the head. Right. Just you, you know, write things in pencil so you can always erase yeah. and just bump it. Like I have my online calendar and I have all my um, patients book for that day. But then I also have the self-care involved in it scheduled into, otherwise I would forget it. But I also have like bills I have to pay who I need to get back to. But if I don't get to it, I just delete and cut and paste and move it to the next day. It's just like, I'm still seeing it. I still know I have to do it, but it's okay if I don't get it done, unless there's like a massive deadline, then I will. But it's finding your way where you can be easy about it. Don't beat right. yourself up over it. But if you're a visual person, um, I usually start with what are the two or three things you want to do? Start there and just move your way forward. And it's okay if you have to erase and redo tomorrow. <laughs> That's exactly. what it's there for. I so like uh, progress, not perfection is how to do it. That sounds great. I like that progress, but not perfection. Cause mm-hmm. I, I always, you know, I, I hate that the, the word pr- perfection or pr- perfect even exists because there is no such thing, that you know, true. there it, 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 it's just a, it's a make-believe word in a sense, you know, that we created as humans, but nothing is perfect, but people try to be perfect, but they mm-hmm. have to realize there is no such thing as perfect. We could, we just try our best. And like you said, you can, you can, everything, you know, nothing is perfect. So we can erase, we could tweak and try to make it better in the future, but, you know, don't ever try for perfection. Cause it's, an, it's, it's not a non-existent, you know, term that was d- developed, but should never have been developed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all define it differently. So it gets really tricky. Yes, um, we do. Yeah. Yes. That's very true. Very true. So tell everybody one more time before you go, what your website is. So they, they both websites, so they keep it in their head. Sure. Um, so my, uh, websites are progresswellness.com and on there, you can learn about me, you, my practice, all the strategies I talked about today and 
kind of behavioral therapies are on there. Um, and then worried to well balanced is another website where I'm hosting all my newsletters and blog posts about all the topics of the day. And if you're you know interested, you can sign up uh, for my newsletter and uh, every every month learn about new topics and different strategies to help you feel better. That sounds awesome. Well, thank you so much, Angela, for being on the show. You provided a great amount of information and the tips were outstanding. So thank you so much for being on the show. And I can't wait to read your new book. <laughs> thank you, Stacey. Yes, that will be a party indeed. I will let you know when that's done. I appreciate yes. it. I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for being on the show.